LLMs need fresh data, and chances are you're using internet search for your automations. With SERP API, you're only getting 100 free searches every month for your NAN workflows. But what if I told you that you could have 100 free searches every single day? Not a lot of people know that you can use Google search for free with NAN. In this video, we'll show you how to create a reusable workflow with Google search that you can integrate into your automations for deep research. Let's dive in. This is AI Agents A to Z. To get started, head to the link that we included in the description. In the programmable search engine, you need to create your first search engine. Let's name it to AI Agents A to Z. And you have a couple of configuration options. You could only use specific websites where you want to search, for example, your website, but we are going to use it to search the whole internet. And we are going to exclude image search, but you could still include it if you want to. Once you create it, you'll get a preview option. So, for example, if you would search for Heron Bird, you can see you get the exact same search results that you would get from a Google search. And with its programmable API, you'll be able to get a JSON response back that you can integrate with your NA10 workflows. Head down to the programmatic access and click on get started. This will take you to a page where it explains how to use the API. You have a quota of 100 free calls every single day. If you need more, you pay $5 per thousand queries. To use the API, you'll need an API key. This will ask you to select a project. If you don't have a project, create one, otherwise select it. And this will generate a new API key for you. Copy the key. This is what we are going to use in Anaten. Let's take a look at the API. You have a few required parameters, query parameters. One is the API key that we just copied. The other one is the ID of the search engine that we created. You can get it in your search engine's description, copy it, you'll need it. And the query parameter that is the most important one is actually the search term that we are going to use. There are other query parameters that we could use. I'm not going to go through every single one because it would be way beyond the scope of this tutorial. However, I'm going to show you a few that I find very valuable. One is the geolocation, it's GL, where you can set which country you would like to search in. For example, if you only want to search for the content in the United States, then you can easily set the country code with the GL query parameter. And the other one is exclude and the include filters. So the site search parameter allows you to specify a couple of websites. And then in the site search filter, you can either include or exclude those from your search results. Num parameter is another one that I find very valuable. You can select the exact amount of uh, search results that you'll get from the search. Uh, however, the top limit is 10. So if you need more, then you will need to implement pagination. All right, let's configure this in an item. So we'll start with a manual trigger. We'll change this later to something else when we finalize this entire thing as a sub workflow. So let's add the edit fields node. And here we're gonna set up the variables to use in the workflow. So the first thing I'm doing is adding the API key that we created. Then we're going to add the ID of our search engine. We'll do the number of top results, essentially the links that we want our search engine to click on when it's doing the research. I'm gonna put in a number, let's just say three. Next thing we can do is add the context. So this is what are we researching? I'm a documentary buff. So let's look for the best documentary movies and series that were released last year. And this could be anything. Again, whatever you're researching for purposes of this video, let's look at documentaries. Finally, let's add the variable for the number of search terms. So this is the number or how many search terms we want our engine to create for us. We'll do two. So ultimately this will process six search results, three times two. 
We'll rename this as configuration. Now let's add a basic LLM chain and we're going to instruct the LLM on what search terms to create. So this is telling Google to come up with the search terms that I can use for the research. And you'll notice that it's using the number of search terms that I set up earlier. We're going to require a specific output. And this basically forces the LLM to return the search terms in a specific structure. So you can see what I've pasted in here. Let's connect a LLM model. So we're going to use OpenAI GPT-40 Mini. Let's test this out. We've got two search terms like I asked for, best documentaries 2024, top documentary series released in 2024. These look great and we can move on. We've got our configuration ready. So now let's run the Google search. We're gonna split out our search terms into two separate items. So we can work on each item one by one. You can see our two search terms are outputted here. And for each search term, we'll run the Google search to get the results. Let's use this HTTP, H, HT. <laughs> now with the HTTP request node, this will actually be the Google search. We'll build our query with our parameters, starting with the Google API key, which we created earlier. Then we have the CX parameter, which is our search engine ID, followed by Q, which is our search terms. Next, we'll add a parameter num, and this will be the number of search results to return. So pull in the top results. Let's also tell Google to exclude Reddit because it's not straightforward to scrape it. Um, you can really only get the question and not the answers in the thread without a different scraping technique that's beyond the scope of this video. So you can see here we've added the site search parameter, put in Reddit, and then we'll also put in site search filter with the value E, which stands for exclude. Okay, let's run the search. And for each item, you can see we've got the title, we've got the link, we have a snippet, and some other details here. So what we wanna do now is we've got one array with all our results. We wanna split out the results from one array into six items. And this is just going to make it a lot easier to deal with. So grab items, run the test, and now you can see we've got six items outputted. All right, now let's use a filter node because we want to filter out any PDFs or other document or file types, um, anything that's not HTML. So let's use this expression and select does not exist. And this will make sure that we only get HTML. Finally, let's make the HTTP request. So we're going to query each link to gather the content of the link. One thing we want to make sure to do is to use the user agent parameter to pretend to be a browser. So this is going to make it look like the request is being made from a browser and not NAN or some other automation. In the settings, make sure to select continue using the error output under on error so the workflow won't stop on failure. Test it out, this looks okay. Now this isn't going to fool everybody. So let's look for some errors and we're gonna do that with a filter node. So let's filter out the errors with this expression and select the object does not exist. Let's also make sure to check that the data does exist. So let's use another expression here for the data and make sure the string exists. If you test this step, you can see that it's kept everything. Now we've got all our content from the search that we ran, and it's time to turn our content into something that an LLM can understand. Let's use an HTML node to extract the body of HTML in an HTML format. So I've got data as the key. You test this step, and you can see here, output looks correct. We also want to turn the HTML into Markdown. This is going to make it more LLM friendly. It also takes up 
fewer characters, um, so it's less space. Let's filter out anything that's empty. So using a filter node, using this expression, now we can make sure that the string is not empty. Finally, let's use a custom code block to clean up our markdown. So we're going to remove any links, any images, extra new lines. All of this is going to make sure that we save as many tokens as possible, which is always a great thing. So you can see here in the JavaScript, um, we've commented out what we're doing to make sure our output is as clean as possible. And the content is now processed. Now that we've processed all of our search content, let's summarize it. What we're going to start with is an LLM chain and we're going to prompt it how to summarize. So here in this expression, we're basically saying, take the data, summarize it, and keep all of the relevant and important information. We also want to add a specific output format. So here we've added summary into the structured output. Let's add an OpenAI model, test the step. One other good thing to do is to go back into our settings for the LLM chain and select retry on fail. It's just some extra buffer. Looks like that was successful. Let's add a second LLM chain and we're going to prompt it to take our original context and assess whether the summary is relevant to the context. So here we'll use an expression. Let's grab context. Let's also make sure this has a structured output. And this is going to describe the relevant to context field as a Boolean. Let's attach it to the same model we grabbed before and test out this step. Boom. All right, we also want to add a filter because we wanna make sure we're ignoring any of the results that the LLM determines is not relevant to context. So here again, select Boolean, whether it's true. And you can see it discarded one of the items which it indicated was false. Awesome. Let's add an edit fields. This will help us set up the data fields that are returned that we can work with. So we want to add the summary. We're also going to add the title. Let's grab the link and the snippet. Test this out and you can see all the items have all the data fields that we want here. And as a last step, let's aggregate. So join all the data under one field called research results. Test it. Looks great. Now for demonstration purposes, we can use a LLM chain and let's instruct it to do something with our research. This is going to show the output of our entire workflow. So let's say I want some recommendations for all of the research that we've just conducted on what the documentaries and docuseries were released in 2024. And you can see in the result, oh, looks like we've got to attach a model. No biggie. Let's go back in, retest, and check out our result. So here we can see a whole list of different documentary recommendations. And it has the title of the documentary along with a short summary. And that's the workflow. All right, let's wrap this up. Let's go back to the very beginning and change the first node into an execute sub workflow node. This is to make sure that this workflow can be called from other workflows. And what we're going to do is grab the variables from our second node. So we're going to add top results, we're going to add context, and finally, num search terms. Let's go into configuration. And here we're going to edit a couple of the parameters just to make sure there's a default value where it's appropriate. So here I'm changing top results 
And let's also quickly edit num search terms. So we've got default values all set up here. So that's deep research with Google search in NAN. Use your imagination to fit your workflow for what the context should be. And remember, you get daily 100 free searches. Anything above this is going to cost $5 per 1,000 searches. And to make this completely free, use Olama with your locally running LLMs. In the next episode, we're going to be using this workflow to build a new automation together. So like and subscribe and see you next time.